Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the weighted mean in Excel. There is a formula that you can use that is already built into Excel, but sometimes you actually have to show the work on paper. So I'm going to show you two methods of doing this. One is if you have to actually show the work when you are doing this to turn in for an assignment and you have to fill everything in and you can use Excel to help you get through things quickly. And then I'm also going to show you how you can just use the built-in formulas if you are trying to find the answer. So the first thing that you need to know is that the weighted mean is found by um, finding the sum of each value times the weight of that value divided by the sum of the weights. Okay, um, for this I am using X bar. Remember that is the sample mean. And so you're dealing with a sample. If you're dealing with the population mean, you would just put mu as your symbol. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up Excel. I have a situation in here where you would see a weighted mean. So the weighted mean is just the, um, like if you have a situation, a lot of times you'll see this in a class. So if you're a teacher, it's really important to understand this formula and understand what the grade book is doing um, so that you can explain it to parents. So if you were trying to do this by hand and you had to show work, um, what you can do is you can use Excel to help you multiply all these values. Because if you were doing this by hand, you would have to take the score times the weight, score times the weight, score times the weight, score times the weight. And then you would have to sum up that column. So I can use Excel to go, hey, I wanna take the value in B2. And if you use the asterisk, Excel sees that as multiplication and you would multiply it by C2 and hit equals. Okay, because this is as a percent, Right here, it does go ahead and convert it to a decimal, which is fine. It's it's one of the things that it automatically does. If it wasn't a percent, it would be 95 times 5, which would be 4.75. Now, I could continue retyping this for each of the cells, or I can just use the handy dandy little just drag it down, and it will automatically put the formula in there for you. Okay, and so then what we would do with our formula is we want to find the sum of these products that we just found. And we need to find the sum of our weights. So this would be our sum of our weights. This would be the sum of the products. Um, so going back to the formula, what I just found was this top part right here. Okay, so that's what we just found was the sum of our products. Now we need to find the sum of our weights. Well, our weights would be the percent of the final grade. So if I come into here, I would just type in equals the sum, and I would find the sum of this column. And it's gonna be 100%. Now the weighted mean, we would just type in equals this value here, divided by this value here and equals and notice it does give me 85.7 because it is dividing by one essentially so that would be our weighted mean because this adds up to be a hundred when you're dividing by 100 percent you're really dividing by one so that's why it ended up being 85.7 now if you didn't have to show this work right here um if you didn't have to show the work of filling in the table, you can use Excel's formulas to help you find this weighted mean another way that's a little bit easier. Okay, um, if you do notice the one that's the largest percent of the grade, notice that it counts as 41 of those 85.7. So if you're in a class right now, it's really important to pay attention to what is going to have the most impact on your grade. And that's the one that you want to do the best effort in. So like if I would have, instead of getting an 82 here, had a 92, notice that now my grade is a 90%. Okay. So even if these values might have been, especially in homework, because it's only 5% of my grade, if this one would have been an 82, it doesn't have much impact on my grade. Okay. So it's really important that you understand um, that the more something weights towards it, the more it's going to have an impact on the overall mean or average of that grade. Okay, so going back to using Excel, so what we did was we found the sum of the products. Well, there is actually a formula in Excel that is called the sum of the product. 
Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to figure out what is your first column that you're going to be using. And then you're going to use your second column. Okay, so I want to find the sum of the products of those values. And then I'm going to divide it by the sum of my weights. So the sum of my weights is in this column here. And then I would just hit enter and notice it gives me the exact same value. So I didn't have to go through the process of being able to fill in all the information. Again, if you're in a class where your professor makes you or your um, instructor, your teacher requires that you show work, you can use Excel to help you do the multiplication so you don't have to do it individually. But if you don't have to show the work, you can go directly to the answer just by typing in equals the sum of the product of the first column that we're talking about comma, the second column where our weights are, and then divided by the sum of the weights. Okay, you can also use this same formula if you're trying to find the mean of a frequency distribution where you have different frequencies. So it doesn't have to be percentages. It could just be um, something where you have a frequency distribution. So for example, let's say that I have the values 15, 25, 35, and 45 happen to be my midpoints of my value. Um, so these are my midpoints of a histogram. Okay. And then I have a frequency of each of these values and I could find an average. So let's say that I had 25 of these. I only had 10 of these, 7 35s and 12 45s. Okay, so there's the most 15. So that's going to have the most weight towards our frequency distribution. But again, we could find the weighted mean in a situation like this where we just do equals the sum product. Highlight the column that we're talking about, comma, highlight our weights. In this case, it would be the frequencies. And then we would divide it by the sum of our frequencies. Okay, and then when I hit enter, I get 26.1 ends up being the mean of this frequency distribution. So you can use the same process if you're trying to find the mean of a frequency distribution. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that also.